The Cham people are an ethnic minority predominantly located in Vietnam and Cambodia. They speak the Cham language and practice the religion of Islam. Hey, I'm Antonio Graceffo, author of the book The Monk from Brooklyn and the host of Martial Arts Odyssey. Today I'm in a Cham village. It's Cham, the Muslim ethnic minority in Cambodia. We're in Kampong Chanam province, and this is my new friend, and his name is Sun Pot. If you ask him if he wants to say hello to the people in America. He said he, he wants to say hello to all Americans, but uh, something like uh, he told you, and uh, all those all the Cham people start to study hard in Cambodia, but they cannot find a good job like, like your country. So your country, all the people live in harmony. The average per capita income in Cambodia hovers between 30 and 50 dollars a month, depending upon who's counting. As a marginalized ethnic minority within one of the poorest countries of the world, the Cham Muslims are extremely poor and at risk. Today, the Cham people in Cambodia, numbering close to a million, live slightly apart from their Khmer neighbors in their own villages where they practice their language, their religion, and their culture. <laughs> the modern Cham are descendants of the Kingdom of Champa, a massive empire which once extended through most of Vietnam and Cambodia. Around 1177, they fought a series of wars with the Angkorian Khmer Empire and eventually sacked the Khmer capital. In 1181, King Jayavarman VII of Cambodia retaliated and conquered the Cham people. During the Khmer Rouge genocide in Cambodia, religion was completely outlawed and anything that was not Khmer, that was not seen as Khmer culture, was not tolerated. So the Cham were subjected to particularly harsh treatment. It's estimated that up to 500,000 Cham were executed during the Khmer Rouge period. Which would account for about 20% of the total victims of the Pol Pot regime. We started with 10 children, now we have 100. <laughs> the majority of the Cham people are Muslim, but there is a small minority which still practice Hindu. In Cambodia, I was unable to find any actual Hindu groups, but I've heard rumors that they exist in Vietnam. Historians believe that the Cham people actually originated in Borneo and once again I've heard rumors that there are Cham communities in Malaysian Borneo. I personally have found Cham villages in Cambodia, in Vietnam and on the island of Palawan in the Philippines. When the kingdom was sacked basically the people scattered all over the region but because of their Muslim re religion and then because of their own ethnicity and culture they wound up in their own tight-knit communities which kept them from assimilating with, uh, with their neighbors whether it be Buddhist or Christian neighbors whether it be the Philippines or, or, or Thailand for example. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Because of this place, uh, all uh, Muslims dis disrelate and uh, very poor, you know. So what do you and need? So you, uh, you help. <laughs> help to make what? Hospital? Hospital, yes. Hospital. Uh, I need a hospital and something that... <laughs> So this helped to preserve the culture and the religion and the language until today. In places like Thailand, however, the Cham eventually moved down to southern Thailand and moved into the Muslim communities. And I was in the Muslim community in southern Thailand trying to find remnants of Cham and I really couldn't find them because they had basically blended into the greater Muslim group. The Muslims, the Thai Muslims, speak a Malayo dialect anyway, so then it becomes difficult to ascertain who's actually speaking Cham, who's speaking uh, Thai Muslim language, and um, who belongs to which group, and of course they intermarried. Whereas in the areas where the Cham were surrounded by Buddhists, they did not intermarry, and so you find these, these Cham villages today in both, uh, as I said, in both Vietnam and Cambodia, there's a lot of Cham villages, and they do not intermarry with the Buddhists. And in Philippines, of course, they don't intermarry with the Catholics. Mm -hmm. We're at the graveyard now. The Khmer normally burn their dead, but the Cham, because they're Muslim, they bury their dead. And what he explained to us was that because the Prophet died and was buried, so all of the followers of Islam then will bury their dead instead of burning them. And the reason why we're at this place, which is a little bit into the jungle, is that during the high, high water season, the rainy season, they'll bury up here 
and then the, uh, the dry season they can bury in the lowlands. In my interviews with the Cham people, they didn't seem to have a tremendous grasp on the religion of Islam. They're often taught by foreign teachers now, but for years and years and years they were completely isolated from the greater uh, Muslim community. They generally have Quran in their homes, and the Quran is written in Arabic, which none of them can read. Occasionally you'll find Quran that are written in Malay script, whether it be the ancient Malay script or, say, modern Romanized Malay, which is a bit easier to read, and their, their language is allegedly closer or more similar to the Malay language, so there is a possibility that they could read it, but as a rule, they can't read their Quran. And I've been in a number of Muslim communities and interviewed a lot of people, and very few of them actually were able to read or understand the Quran. Uh, they do practice circumcision. They do observe Ramadan. There are, in Cambodia, two major sects. One sect prays three times a day, one prays only on Fridays. Uh, none of them eat pork. Allegedly, they don't drink alcohol, but it's widely rumored that they all drink alcohol. The women generally wear headscarves. The men generally wear hats, but not always. Uh, as for the burqa, or say a total body covering for women, this is a very new development in Cambodian Islam and I've only seen one or two in Cambodia and only very recently, just in the last couple of years. The statistics on how many Cham actually live in Cambodia are quite muddled. The Cambodian government claims that only 4% of the population in Cambodia is not Khmer, but this is clearly untrue because th th there's literally millions of Chinese. And then the Cham, there are statistics ranging from half a million to one million that live in Cambodia today. The Jam seem to still have very high birth rates, whereas birth rates for Chinese have dropped dramatically, and even birth rates for uh, Khmer's have dropped dramatically. So the Jam will continue to be a larger percentage of the population of Cambodia. Uh, when I was in Kempchia Krom, I found, which is lower Cambodia, the part that now belongs to Vietnam, I also found Jam communities and um, mosques there and the people spoke Cham and Khmer as well as Vietnamese. He said there is only one God is Allah, is the biggest and the highest.